Hey guys, Aaron Zeller here of the Zeller Writing Company and InkOnHand.com. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the winter 2013 edition of Memo Books from Field Notes. It is the Cold Horizon edition, and it's probably one of their more unique editions to date. Uh, lots of cool little characteristics, including a glossy cover, gradient across them, three different covers, three paper colors, tons of cool little things they haven't really done before, and I want to let you know all about them. So let's check them out. All right, so here is the 2013 winter edition from Field Notes. It's Cold Horizon. Um, just like all other Field Notes editions, it's 5.5 inches tall, 3.5 inches wide, uh, 3 8 inch rounded corners. Comes in a pack of three with a belly band. Uh, the belly band is slightly more glossy than typical. Um, and there's quite a few very unique things about this edition. Um, they also typically come wrapped in plastic. Mine's already off. Um, but it's just a plastic coat, a plastic seal. So take that off. Um, and my ladies out, the first thing I'll notice is that there are three different colors here for these covers, but they're not just three different colors, they're actually three different gradients. Um, they're actually really unique because they flow into each other and are totally interchangeable. Uh, you start off with the dark blue, which is for winter nights, um, and then you have glacial blue waters, and then metallic for aurora borealis. I'm pretty sure that's what they're all for. Um, I could be wrong about which is which, but I'm pretty sure that's it, and that they are interchangeable. So it's you tell right here it's a nice solid flow, but you can take this one, put it over to this edge, uh, it still flows fine. Do the same thing with this, and it still flows. Um, yeah, it's got very glossy covers. Um, Typically they're not glossy, um, but they are in this case. And the, the Aurora Borealis one is a metallic ink. Uh, the regular ones, and this, it's also hard to see, this is probably the one that has the, the weakest gradient as far as the change, uh, but there is just a light blue that's not metallic to more of a silvery blue that is metallic there. I don't know if you can really, it's kind of hard to tell in the light. Then yeah, you can definitely tell with that where it goes from the silvery to the darker blue. And this one has no metallic at all on it. Um, yeah, they have uh, steel staples compared to usual. They are, I think that's about it for the covers, actually. Um, we'll go back, we'll talk about the interior now. Uh, you'll have, just like all other edition of Field Notes, it's the Finch Opaque Smooth 50 pound text bright white paper. Um, but the big difference is it's not actually white anymore. Uh, they did a wash over all these papers. So you have a light blue is this one. You got a light green. And then here you got a light gray or a cool gray as they called it. Um, and then the graph is a 3 16 inch graph ruling with uh, light gray ink. Um, 48 pages just like all of the others. Uh, oh, the interiors are also white and glossy, but the ink on all of the interior pages are a different color. So it's kind of hard to tell, but all three of them are different. You got, I think, the metallic, the dark blue, and the light blue. So I think it's still the three main colors of the notebooks themselves are being used um, in the back all of the practical applications are the same. What I liked about the Night Sky Edition um, was that they were all different in the R Story part about as far as being like early summer, midsummer, late summer. Uh, these are all the same. It's not really, it doesn't say anything about Cold Horizon or anything about if it's Aurora Borealis or Glacial Waters or anything like that. Um, just a regular R Story, which I'm pretty sure would match. Um, the regular editions. Uh, practical applications are different. Uh, the same for each notebook, but they are different compared to the others. And then of course your specifications as far as how the actual notebook was created. Um, and then you have your ruler right there. Um, yeah, so I can do a quick test of the paper because even though it is the Finch paper, which is the same, it's not super fountain pen friendly. Um, when I've tested all the other ones, but Previous ones were just plain white. They weren't washed at all. Um, so I'll try this one here, which is a um, Noodler's Ahab. Um, the 
flex nib. Zoom in really quick. And uh, can't spell it for the life of me. Uh, New there's habanero. Ink. Um, see, being a left handed person, I can't really get the thick lines like I usually want. Also, might have to do with the paper because this pen's not really flowing like it normally does. Yeah, so I don't think the paper is nearly as nice. This is just regular printer copy paper, but the flow is being a lot nicer on that. Sorry for hitting everything while I get rid of the paper. The flow is a lot nicer on regular copy paper than it is on this. So I think the wash might have affected kind of how it sucks up the, the ink or absorbs the ink. It's supposed to be more of a technical term than sucks up. Um, I also haven't twisted that. And my pen here, oh, there it goes. Um, I'll have to. All right, there's a little bit more flow. Had a bad seal, sorry to come unscrewed some. Yeah, this pen was clear, and then I used it for the longest time as an eyedropper with a Pelican ink or pink ink, can't remember the name of it. Um, so yeah, so it's definitely not fountain pen friendly paper by any means. Of sp oh, I got yeah, ink all over my hands. Well, oh well. Um, so that's with a flex nib though. I'll try it really quick with a regular bold nib. This is the, let me use this pen in a while. Uh, Twisby 580 rose gold with a Jayer Bond tear to few. Oh, it's kind of weird. Writing with it. Let's see if it'll focus there really quick so you can get closer. But as it dries, kind of, it's weird where it almost separates. So that might be because of the wash. It's definitely different compared to regular, um, the Finch paper. It's having, which I think it's, it's because of, of the wash with the ink. So this is definitely not fountain pen friendly, even less, I would say, than their regular field notes paper. So take that into account. Um, if a, of course, like all the others, they're never advertised as fountain pen friendly um, uh, paper at all. They're advertised for use pens, pencils, things like that. And for that, they're going to work flawlessly just like all the others. Um, and also, fountain pen, uh, field notes are usually meant to be used in the field, and it's a little harder to use the fountain pens in the field. So we just have a regular click pen uh, or a pencil with you at all times, and that's what the, that, that's how you take notes in the field. Um, it's kind of hard to use the fountain pen while holding it at a weird thing. You have to be at the right angle and whatnot. Um, yeah, so as you can tell, it's not fountain pen friendly, but I still really like it. It's definitely it's unique. It's not my favorite for sure. Um, my favorite was probably America the Beautiful is definitely up there because I love the printing pattern, and then it would be um, Traveling Salesman probably next. Because the paper was phenomenal. I love the cover. Um, ledger paper is unique. You don't really see that anymore. Um, but this is also really, really cool too. Um, it's probably my top five, I would imagine. Um, but uh, just because I'm not really a glossy gradient kind of guy, but it's definitely something cool that I haven't seen done with really any other notebooks. Um, gradients, let alone a continuous gradient across three notebooks that are interchangeable. Um, so that itself is unique, very cool. So if you're into this gradient look, uh, you're not planning on using fountain pens with it. And yeah, I mean, it's a cool, unique addition. Um, yeah, there isn't a whole ton to say about it aside from it's definitely unique. Oh, with the glossy, you can tell 
Uh, it definitely shows smudges a lot more as far as fingerprints go, but that can just get wiped off. It's also not, you'd think it's a really, really smooth, but it feels like it has a little bit of a grip on the cover. It's not, it's not like glassy like it looks. Um, there is a little bit of a grip to it, which is kind of nice. It's not a, it's not a glassy feel, which I would absolutely hate. So that's something that that's cool they did there. Um, yeah, but overall, I think that's about it on these. So I think that I covered this edition pretty well. As you can tell, it's a unique offering compared to what they've normally been doing, but it's still a pretty cool edition overall. So if you have any comments or questions about them, feel free to let me know in the comments below. You can always shoot me an email or reach out to me via any of the other social media outlets that I'm on, and I'll be happy to help you out. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.